Hey guys, welcome back to our Star Trek mod. Today we want to have a closer look at what we have in this mod exactly. At first we have the Galaxy Class. Beautiful USS Enterprise made by the famous Mr. King. Um, let's have a look at, uh, closer look at the systems. We have in this ship the normal bridge, basic vanilla part, there is nothing special on it. Same for the crew quarters, we just take what we have. We have in the front part four torpedo launchers for this ship. Torpedo launchers could be equipped with five types of torpedoes. Yeah, three types of torpedoes. We have the normal photon, photon torpedo launcher. The normal photon torpedo launcher fires in volleys of three photon torpedoes in quick charge. Has a decent range and of course homing ability. Now let me switch this one here to Quantum Torpedo Launcher and the third one is the Tree Cobalt Torpedo Launcher. I will place a target over here. Uh, let's take this one here. This one, this one, this one. So this is just a target dummy. Um, there is nothing special in it. Small room in the center. Small storage with torpedo parts. And that's it. So let's take a look. We have the torpedo launcher. The torpedo launcher just has three shots and that's it. But it will do a little bit of damage against corridors. So we, we can use it and it's pretty good against um, shields or unarmored parts because it's a homing missile can target from behind so engines might be a thing for that one but against armor it is yeah quite ineffective then we got three cobalt torpedoes three cobalt torpedoes are a little bit different they fire a fire in a um, smaller array a smaller fire rate but they can penetrate corridors and armor so they have a little bit of the um, railgun of the vanilla game. So these torpedoes, uh, quantum torpedoes, are best used when you when the enemy doesn't have any shields left. So just penetrate their ship. And the last one, the big boomer, is the tricobal torpedo. Um, this one is a weaker nuke. We can have this one here. And as you can see. A nuke would do comparable damage, a little bit more even, but the advantage of the Tricobal torpedo is it has homing ability, like every torpedo. So this baby can follow you, can even attack your rear part, what a nuke never would do. So it's pretty dangerous. Okay, let me kill those one here. Back to this one. Next system we have is the phaser strip. The phaser strip fires a beam in a target direction. This one is a pretty good um, weapon, a basic weapon for the Federation. Of course, nearly every ship has phaser strips somewhere over the hull. The special for this one is we have inserted um, a switch to increase or decrease the fire arc. The more restricted the fire arc is, the more damage the phaser will do. So if we have a 180 fire arc, we can fire in the top half of the screen anywhere, but we do the least damage. If we get a 55 degree fire arc, we will do significantly more damage. We can have a take a shot over here. Let's get this one. This is one shot. You see, if you don't have shields or armor, this one is pretty devastating. And now let's get the same one with a 50, a 45 degree phaser beam. And let's see what this one will do. Ah, uh, fast, nearly. Just selected the wrong. Here, let's take this one here. And as you can see, it's much more devastating because it now has a restricted fire arc, but it, it does the highest damage for that one. But you need to um, yeah, turn your ship 
the correct space for that one. Okay, the next part is we have point defenses over here, right at the edge of the ship. These are all small phaser arrays. By default, they are just uh, set up for defense. They could be put for offense only or for both. So basically, they are a smaller part of the flak cannon. And this one is, of course, a beam weapon, but it deals, well, a little bit of damage. They are pretty strong, but they don't have that much energy storage. So they have to be reloaded after two or three shots. Well, this one is the weapon part for the Galaxy class. We have a few other weapons. Um, for example, the Define class, smaller ship here, has um, dual impulse phaser cannons that will do a nice amount of damage. I will take this one here and give you a small view for that one. And if you see, if you have armor, you can yeah, endure a few volleys. If this one here is uh, hits no armor areas, you're pretty much done really fast. All right, that's for the dual phaser strips. Next system, we have the heart of the ship. This one is a warp core. We have warp cores in three different sizes, large, medium, small. This one is the large version for Galaxy class and other big ships. This one here is the small warp core for Define class ships or Miranda classes, Centaur classes, all the smaller classes you know from the series. Um, the warp core uses antimatter, that's this one here, to create energy. And the specialty is the warp core is able to provide this energy directly to subsystems all over the ship. But not to all subsystems. As you see, the vanilla shield generators will still need to carry good old batteries. But, um, yeah, why, we did, why did we do that? Um, because it will break even more of the balance of the game if we uh, supply energy directly to these shield generators here. But we have another part comparable or going together with the warp core. It's the plasma tube. The plasma tube is a room that will get energy from the warp core, remote energy. And all workers could yeah, gather energy batteries from the plasma tubes in different sizes as they need it. They can use single batteries, they can get double or triple batteries out of the plasma tubes and these plasma tubes will automatically refill as long as the warp core has enough antimatter to refill them. Uh, the bridge is um, uh, gets energy directly from the warp core so you will never be able to uh, shut down a bridge with EMPs on a ship that has an active warp core because it's just um, a yeah, fraction of a second that this, uh, this bridge has no energy because it will get immediately new energy from the warp core to get the ship functional. So what do we do? What do we have again? This one here. This one, this nice little room is the phaser strip from the bottom view. So we have here a phaser strip that will fire, but this one is still a normal room. So your crew can walk in this room, through this room, there, is, there isn't even a speed um, limitation. So you have 100% crew speed inside phaser banks. But every phaser bank needs a phaser bank control room directly adjacent to the phaser bank. Without this one here, this phaser strip will not work. Well, um, what do we have again? We have, we have the central shield core. The central shield core will create the big shield bubble for this ship. The shield bubble is divided into four sectors because, hey, we are Star Trek. And in Star Trek, the front shield may uh, fall down, the back shield, the left, the right shield. We, yeah, take care of this behavior in the way we created a shield room that will create four different shields. 
So you really can shut down the starboard shield without damaging the front, back or the uh, left shield of this ship. But this comes at high cost. Um, the shield generator will require so much energy that only the warp core will not be able to load the shield generator. So you need plasma tubes nearby to get the shield up and running. The warp core will have nearly enough power to hold the shield in standby. But nevertheless, if you plan a ship with warp core and a shield generator, use plasma tubes nearby. All right. The last part, or the second last part, is the warp nacelle. Um, well, we know Star Trek ships in this game, we have seen a few, but all those thruster and thruster plume plumes don't seem very Star Trek-ish. So we decided to create warp nacelles as main thrust and maneuverab maneuverability parts. And these warp nacelles here work as a four-way thruster. So you can put two into your ship. This is a limitation for your ships. You will never have more than two, uh, two warp nacelles. And these will uh, provide thrust in all four directions. And additionally, you may put impulse engines in your ship that will do additional back thrust. Neither warp nacelles nor impulse engines are rotatable because they just provide back thrust. Um, we know this will also make diagonal ships um, impossible. Yes, but it's a design decision we made because we want to have Star Trek ships in a certain way and our parts to be used as part of Star Trek ships. So we have a few other limitations. You may only build one warp core in your ship if this baby explodes, mm, yeah, that will do a considerable, considerable amount of damage. Gerd. Today I have a knot in my tongue. Um, you're only able to build one shield core because this one is pretty strong. That's the reason why we, if you play with the Federation faction, um, you should stay away from Federation room until your ship is at least half a million credits of value worth. Because this shield generator is, for a starter ship, unpenetrable. You don't have any chance to get through this part here, through this shield. We're still done, uh, not done with balancing. We have a lot to do because um, yeah, we, we want to balance this whole mod against vanilla. So that this seems well, seamlessly fit into the vanilla game experience, especially in career mode. This one is, yeah, you could use it for multiplayer, yes, but primarily meant for single player career mode experience or multiplayer career mode. It works both. I have, I have a friend, we just started a game twice because the first time we were too close to the Federation and the first ship we uh, discovered was a really, really bad Miranda class, but that's still enough for a starter game or starter ship. Okay, um, the torpedo launchers. Torpedo launchers um, have as well a limit of four. You can choose whatever you like. If you want to have uh, four photon torpedo launchers, you will pretty quickly clean up enemy shields. If you use four quantum torpedo launchers, it's your best bet against a yeah, deep hidden reactor. Or if you just want to do devastating damage, use four tricobalt torpedo launchers. Anyway, these torpedo launchers are pretty strong, so we decided to get a limit of four of these babies in your ship. Um, phaser strips are unlimited, but phaser strips have a small area around. Um, I can show you this one here, as you see. The area is a blocking area, not for normal parts, as you can see here. They would perfectly fit into every part of your ship. You can build them anywhere, even here. If I'd like to. These forbidden areas are just for other phaser strips. So you see I can't place it here because there is a forbidden area over here and it's a forbidden area that's just because of balancing that you cannot put yeah, a lot of phaser strips onto one controller for example. 
If you don't have this restricted area, it would be possible for one control room to control four rips. Oh, I see. Even though one control room can still control two strips. Oh, that's not good. Good. I've seen it now. I have to take care of that one as well. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for this one, for this ship. Do we have anything over here? No, we just have engines over here. We have a torpedo launcher over here. We have phaser strips. Everything is fine. All right. Um, yeah, that's for the current state of the mod. This is nearly everything we implemented right now, and it will, together with the Federation faction, make a beautiful career experience once your ship has a certain value. So you need to play through the first stages of the game with the enemies you know, but at a certain point you can course switch to the federation space and explore their stations their defense stations we have a complete ship rooster with different classes you know from the films i can give you a small glimpse of federation ships as you see there are a few there are stations we have transporters well we have everything you need to really yeah get a crush on the federation all right that's for today thank you for your attention and have a nice day